Hi there, and uh, welcome back for another episode of LOCAD TV. Once again, I'm joined by Johannes Fermoral, and today we're going to be discussing the rather controversial topic of blockchain and bitcoins. Bitcoins in particular have really attracted the attention of the world's media, and it's really easy to see why. Uh, with a random, mysterious inventor that nobody knows who he is, with bad guys making fortunes overnight from get-rich-quick scams, and students becoming overnight millionaires, it certain, certainly has all of the makings of a box office hit. Today we're going to try and get to the bottom of this subject and understand why it can be applied to the world of supply chains. So Johannes, if we look at some of the uh, supply chain experts, they're not really talking about Bitcoin, they're more talking about blockchain. So just to be clear, what is it that we're actually talking about today? So I guess today, uh, for supply chain purposes, we are going to talk about Bitcoin. And actually, there is the, it's, it's very interesting. There is a simple trick to differentiate between the people who knows what they're talking about from the people who have no clue whatsoever about what they're talking about. The people who have no clue about cryptocurrencies in general, they would actually use the word blockchain. The people who have, um, uh, I would say, a decent knowledge about the stuff, they would actually refer it as, as Bitcoin. So that's, that's a way to identify the experts. That would be the, probably the, the entry point of this discussion. Okay, it's quite a uh, strong statement, that one, considering there's a growing number of blockchain experts out there. Um, I'm sure that probably they don't all agree with you. <laughs> so before we get too many angry comments on our video, perhaps you could sort of explain that a little bit more and elaborate a little bit more for us. Yes, so the blockchain is a data structure. You know, it's, there is many, it's like a, a very useful computer trick. There is plenty of other similar computer tricks that have been known for decades. Uh, in itself, you know, it doesn't provide anything just being a good data structure. So the blockchain emphasizes, I would say, uh, a technicality. And if you want an analogy, it would be a bit like thinking, oh, you know, the first iPhone was such a hit. Uh, it was all because of the special glass that uh, iPhone was using. I mean, yes, the first iPhone had a, a very nice type of glass for the screen, but clearly what made the iPhone, the iPhone, something very great was the wall package. You know, it was the iPhone as a wall. That was, that, that was uh, the genius and, and something that was very great. Bitcoin, it's the same. It's not, it's not the blockchain that is a technicality that makes Bitcoins great. But, um, it's a detail. Okay, so leaving iPhones aside, what you're basically saying there is that blockchains aren't really secure without Bitcoins. I mean, is there no other way of securing these blockchains at all? So, uh, unfortunately, no. I mean, yes, as you correctly point out, um, the, the security, which is really the, the whole point of, of, of Bitcoin, emerge from the money angle. So it's because Bitcoin is money that it actually provides any security. So, um, and that's, that's typically something that people who are discussing about blockchain are missing, is that if you remove the, the money angle, basically the, everything that was interesting in the first place is kind of lost. Um, and most of the thing that you could do with a blockchain are actually better done with just a very traditional SQL database that can be secured and shared in, in many ways that are vastly easier and more accessible than a blockchain. I mean, blockchain have its own interest, but it's really not the one that most people expect. Okay, so if we agree that supply chains are gonna have to continue using Bitcoins for now, um, but what's not exactly clear is what supply chains can actually, can actually do with it. So perhaps do you have a, an example uh, in the real world where this could actually work? Yes. So um, let's take a very real world problem of um, counterfeit drugs in Africa. So uh, it's very hard to have any reliable statistics on how many people in Africa are buying counterfeit drugs, but it's a very, very real problem. And the drugs, the fake drugs they are buying are for the most terrible disease like AIDS. And again, it's very hard to have uh, statistics that you can trust, but um, I, I would, my own personal estimation is that we are talking of literally a couple of millions of lives that are going to be lost over the next one or two decades in Africa just for this very problem. So it's a, it's a very, very grave problem. 
Now, um, the, in order to solve this problem, and Bitcoin can be part of the solution, you can use a very simple trick um, to basically improve traceability. What you need to do is to put on every box, drug box, produced by a, a respectable pharmaceutical company, a seal that contain a private Bitcoin key. So what is the, the, the whole point of it? So that every box travel from wherever the, 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 um, the drug is produced, which is a secure location, to the end user, which is living typically in a country that is not so secure in general for many reasons. Uh, and then what they are going to do is that when somebody buy a box of drug that they need, they will break the seal and claim the Bitcoins for themselves because there is a, a small you know, financial incentive in them doing that. So why do they do, they do that? Just because they, they want to claim the money back, you know, simple as that. And they will do that with an app on their mobile phone, you know, just break the seal, scan, claim the money. And what the app would do is that on top of letting them claim the money, the, the app would check whether the money originates from the pharmaceutical company that they think they are buying the drug from. And that's, that's where it gets very, very interesting, that suddenly um, all users are actually checking the boxes out of the circuit as they consume them. And if people know that there is such a, a mechanism that is available, they don't want to buy a box that doesn't come with a seal to check that it originates from the company. So you see, it's a very distributed way of, of basically eradicating um, uh, counterfeit drugs. And the very interesting thing is that when you think about it, it only works because money is involved. You know, that's a very Bitcoin-ish thing. Um, it's Bitcoin is secure because it fundamentally creates trust through aligned economic incentives. So that's, so that's why the blockchain alone, people are just completely missing the point. It's that they are missing the point that at its core, it's about economic alignment. Okay. So now that money is involved, I can see why it's definitely interesting. So what we're sort of saying is that Bitcoin isn't just about having a secure database. It's kind of about creating those right incentives so that people do the right thing. And it's not because there's lots of nice people out there in the world, unfortunately, but it's because if they don't, they're going to lose out on things like money or clients and, and things like that. Um, but if we look at sort of the supply chain industry, um, there's a lot of cases which aren't so... Uh, in, your, in your example, there's sort of counterfeiting and the problems of corruption. In the supply chain, there's uh, cases which aren't so corrupt and there's, they're a lot more secure, uh, where counterfeiting isn't really a problem. So is there anything that these supply chain cases can gain from Bitcoin? Yes, so let's try, we, we started with Africa, let's, let's go to the uh, other, I would say, end of the spectrum with, let's say, aerospace. So aerospace is an industry um, that has achieved incredible level of security and trust. You know, um, aircraft have never been safer to fly and, um, and it's, it's, it's a massive feat to have achieved that. Uh, because basically, if you have, uh, you know, aircraft needs to be maintained, and if, um, if a company does not properly maintain an aircraft, you have uh, literally lives at stake. I mean, you can literally kill 200 passengers at once just because you, you, you're not doing the proper maintenance that the aircraft actually need. And it's a very difficult and complicated maintenance that's, that is involved in maintaining an aircraft. So this industry has been remarkably good at doing that. So now the question would be, and, and obviously, you know, if corruption was taking place, aircraft would keep crashing all the time. So basically, it's kind of a proof that it's, it's a highly competitive industry, uh, just, and that is non corrupt, just because actually the aircraft are, are flying, you know, really safely. I mean, there, there is one reason why uh, an airplane crash is making the news, is because it's so rare, not because it, it actually happened frequently. So back to this, this sort of industry where the trust is very high, where the competition is very strong. Um, how can we actually benefit from Bitcoin? Well, the reality is that uh, in order to have near perfect traceability in aerospace parts, what most companies that I know of are doing is that they are doing, tra uh, they are, they are doing basically tra um, traceability two ways. First, they have their digital records that go through their IT systems. But they are still doing, on top of that, the paper, uh, the paper records, both, both systems. So now the question is, why don't they 
um, wh why, why can't they eliminate the paper? I mean, most other industries have managed to eliminate the paper. And the, the answer is very simple, is that they can't really bring themselves to completely trust their own IT systems. And I believe that, um, that right now, this is the right option. They should not be trusting their, their IT systems. Uh, they, they don't, they are not, um, they cannot deserve this trust yet. So, um, so the end result is that it's extremely costly and because aerospace is very fragmented, um, the cost of having all of that, uh, uh, all of that trustability taking place is very, very high. I mean, the cost is very, very high. And, um, and Bitcoin can actually deliver a security at the, the same level, actually, and even better security at a much, much lower cost. So what you're sort of saying there is that Bitcoin might actually be subsidizing the IT infrastructure behind the aerospace industry. I mean, it's definitely not what people who invest in Bitcoins expecting to get rich quick would expect. But the thing we're, we're really not talking about here is the trust, because the aerospace industry is incredibly regulated. And like you mentioned, there's human lives at stake. So do you think the aerospace industry can ever fully trust Bitcoin? Ah, uh, that's interesting, because that's also something that mm, I would say most blockchain experts tend to miss, is that the whole point of Bitcoin is to generate a system where, um, that is so secure that you, can tr you, you could put your, your, your own life on the line. And I would even be, I think Bitcoin is even weirder than that. I would say it's about achieving an insane level of security where you would be willing to trust the lives of your children with this sort of security, which is just pretty much very insane, as insane as it can get in terms of IT security. Now, uh, how, does, uh, how, how does actual security in the real world, especially in supply chain, actually work? It's not, it's not like that at all. Most of the security in supply chain, the IT security, I mean, the IT security is achieved uh, through obscurity, which is a very different security model. Okay, security through obscurity. Yes. Uh, I'm sure a lot of our viewers watching at home, I'm sure there's a few IT security experts amongst them, but I most definitely aren't one, and I'm sure a few of our other viewers aren't. So what does this term actually mean? I mean, is there a specific angle for supply chains here? Yes, yes, uh, there is. And so um, the idea is that you are in, in, in IT, you know, when you have software, you have two ways to make something kind of secure. One way is uh, security by obscurity, that's supply chain way, and then, it's, uh, and then it's complete openness, that's the Bitcoin way. So what is this security by obscurity? It's because those supply chain systems are very complex. Some of them are very ancient. Some of them are very, very badly implemented. Uh, so imagine you're, you're a hacker, you, know, you, you want to get into the system. And the system is like a huge pile of nonsense. It's like three decades of COBOL, a super old programming language. So you want to get into the system, but the system is so badly designed that it's a nightmare. I mean, the, you know, people forget that attackers, you know, hackers, etc., they are, they are human too. And when they see something that is a complete nightmare in terms of, of IT systems, they get bored. They say, I'm not going to hack this system. It's just so much, so many nonsense. I'm not going to waste months of my life doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm better off trying to, to hack Facebook. I, 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 it's more fun. And, uh, and so it's very real. That's what you call security by obscurity. It's, no, it's not very secure. It's just that people, it's, so, it's such a drag to even try that most attackers don't have the mental fortitudes it takes to attack the system. And, and, for, and unfortunately, I would say most IT system powering supply chains that have been in place for decades, they are not new, uh, they have been extensively modified by hordes of engineers. Uh, they are, I mean, they are very, very obscure. I mean, they are very obscure even for the companies that run those systems. So I can uh, I mean, just imagine the level of obscurity for the people who are not even into the system. So that's, that's security by obscurity. Bitcoin is the exact opposite. Bitcoin is open source. And it's, it's sitting, you know, in, 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 in the middle, I mean, the middle of the internet. It's completely permissionless. Anybody can attack the thing. And guess what? That's what they do all day long. Okay. So there seems to be quite a few genuine reasons to go for Bitcoin. 
But what about the supply chain executives? I mean, they're very busy people. They have to prioritize their actions. I mean, where should they place Bitcoins? I mean, there's so many interesting things going on in the market at the minute. Look at artificial intelligence that we yes. discussed last week. Should Bitcoin be a priority for those ex executives at the moment? Uh, mindset would be not quite yet. Um, and there is one elephant in the room that m I would say, again, most blockchain experts tend to miss. And this elephant is called scalability. So scalability is the ability to you know, process many, many transactions. And when we think of supply chain, we are talking of billions of transactions because w that's what it takes when you are a very large supply chain that is doing very real things in the real world. Now, um, uh, why is it so much a problem with specifically with all those digital coins, Bitcoin included, and we get back to, to this very point. With a digital coin, Bitcoin or otherwise, um, you have a very, very specific problem, is that you need to get scalability right from day one. Why? Because if you substantially modify your digital coin after the day it was created, what is happening in practice is that you end up destroying people's money while doing the modification. So imagine you have a coin and say, oh, we need to scale now. Oh, oh sorry, guys. We're just going to destroy your money, but, but please, it's for the greater good. So can you guess, you know, as, as a human, you know, say I had money, I'd, I'd purchase that, and they say some other guy, a, a software engineer, uh, is going to tell me, I'm sorry, but, uh, but no, I'm just going to destroy your money, but it's, it's for the greater good. You, you're, go you're not going to be happy with that. Uh, actually, you're going to be, let's literally, dead against it. And this is exactly what is happening right now. So modifying substantially a digital coin after its creation is not an option. This is not Facebook. You cannot start small and say, I, uh, I will scale as needed when it's needed. No, no, it has to be scalable by design from day one. And it's very interesting is that, to my knowledge, there is only one digital currency that actually had this very angle built in. Just one, the original Bitcoin. And very interestingly, Bitcoin, I mean, the, the original Bitcoin do not exist anymore because there has been some forks, so plenty of forks, so plenty of variations. So, they, so, so for people that are thinking, oh, I would like to, to, to buy Bitcoin, I'm sorry, Bitcoin do not exist anymore. That's too bad. But I can tell you what is the one thing that still exists and that can still scale. And there is only one of them because it's, well, uh, it's, and it's called Bitcoin Cash, because actually, if you want to scale, it has to be like cash. So, so, um, and so basically, the only thing that will scale is Bitcoin Cash. So that's, by the way, the reason why Locad, um, uh, who is basically a supply chain company, we decided to invest on, uh, on, on, a scalab on a software scalability component dedicated to Bitcoin Cash, because first, it's the only, probably about the only coin where this component can even exist. Uh, and second is uh, because there is a world community that is, re I would say, unified around this very idea that it needs to scale because obviously it's a highly collaborative thing. Uh, scalability cannot happen just because of low-cad. We need to collaborate with tons of other companies in that. And, and, and Bitcoin Cash is the one company that had this angle of scaling, which is required for supply chain. Okay, great. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today, but thanks again for taking the time out to talk to us. Um, we hope that you at home have enjoyed today's discussion. I know there'll be a lot of opinions on today's subject, so if you'd like to know a little bit more about LOCAD or know a bit more about blockchain or bitcoins and why they're important for the supply chain industry, then make sure you leave a comment on today's video or instead drop us an email at locad.com. So that'll be all for today, but we'll be back very soon with another episode. So in the meantime, make sure you subscribe to our videos and we'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.